Right then folks, welcome back. As you can see, I finally got this soul sieve. Some people call them a trommel, but I think a trommel is uh, more heavy duty for uh, grading stones in my opinion. So I'm still gonna call it a rotary uh, soil sieve. So I've put some wheels on it, but I'll show you that later. But the wheels I've put on, I've got big wheels at the front and smaller wheels at the back. So it's give, it's give it a natural two to three inch slope, which is fine if you're on a flat surface. But if you're out and about, I've made it so the wheels come off really easy and you can just block it up on bricks or whatever. But I've got this, uh, I've got, I don't, I don't actually know where all this has come from. I've got this, it's, it's a bit damp, not very damp. Uh, soil, I, honestly, I don't know where this soil has come from in my uh, wheelbarrow. I can't put nothing else underneath any trucks because all my trucks are full of uh, tops of from the mole hills. So I just want to put a bit in and try and experiment to see how high it, it throws it out and where I want to put my board in and my sheet in to make the uh, soil come down onto, onto what side. And I want to make sure that the stuff falls out the far end easier. So I'm gonna go around and turn it on and we'll take it from there. Wish me luck. So. We'll try like that for the time being. Wish me luck, I don't know what's gonna happen. Hope it works. So let me move the camera, let me stop this video and let me take you around and show you. So as you can see, I've got the beautiful sieved soil there and out there are the stones and some of the weeds. Now I'm going to lift up the camera and show you something else, bear with me one second. You'll see that inside some of the weeds get caught up on this central uh, shaft and get caught on some of the protruding uh, uh, screws in there, yeah? But, let me take you around this way. Yeah. Let me show you the, let me show you the, oh, bit of a bang. Sorry about this, terrible filming. And down here. Oh my life, look at that. Absolutely perfect. And then down there, there wasn't many stones in it, yeah? But down there is all the stones. So, let me stop this video and I'll get back to you. So, the proof's in the pudding. Look at that beautiful sieved, uh, sieved soil out there. Uh, yes, some of the stuff has been caught up around the middle shaft, but I'm not too bothered about that because uh, these are weeds that I've taken up from somewhere, but I can't think for the life of me where I got them from. Uh, oh, I do know. This is chunks of turf and soil scraped out by the front doors of my polytunnel. Yeah, because it was getting all muddy and I, I had to do some re repairs there. So I scraped it out and that's what this is. 
So normally I wouldn't be putting in chunks of grass, it'll just be dirt uh, and stones, a few tweaks, this and that, the other. So I'm not going to worry about that too much. If I think, if I think that there's too much stuff getting caught up on that central shaft, I can, I can, uh, I can, I can sort that out. So, but I'm over the moon. It works perfect. So what I'm going to do now is figure a way of, uh, admittedly, I'm going to cut off the, uh, the six mil bolts holding these timbers in. Yeah. Because uh, that will catch up on some of the weeds. But it works perfectly. Absolutely perfect. So, uh, all I've got to do now is I've got to build, uh, if you notice on the other one, my compost sieve, I've got a piece of curved metal, so the soil drops onto the curved metal, drops down, and all congregates here, and then you can shovel it and put it anywhere you like, and only put it into bags ready to be used. So that's what I'm going to do on this, and then I'm going to organise uh, some way of collecting all the debris out the other side. So I'm going to cut some of the wood off the end and just put a wooden chute with two sides so it, it'll go into a go into a nice container. Yeah. Uh, because I've got I can put a pallet there and I've got a nice big container, fill it full of the stones, and then I can pick it up with my uh, the forks on my little uh, tractor. So as for the first test, out of ten a good nine out of 10, yeah. The speed's perfect, yeah. You don't need it nowhere near full blast, uh, full speed, but what I'm waiting for is a 240 volt to a 12 volt power reducer, like a little transformer, because this is gonna be mainly run off the mains. Uh, so yeah, absolutely fantastic. Still gotta decide what I'm gonna do with these pieces up here. I might not do anything with them, yeah. I don't know, but as for the first test and the first run, you've got to admit, look at that, absolutely beautiful, yeah, and something else I like about sieving your soil uh, and your compost, it breaks it up and it puts a lot of air into it, puts, gets some, it gets some air going in, which is what you want, yeah, you don't want everything too compacted, you need a bit of air, so yeah. Happy days. I better get the kettle on and celebrate. Well done, sure. That's fantastic. Afternoon, folks. Only me again, Sean. Uh, here is Happy Days Veg. Uh, you'll have to excuse me. I'm full of cold today. I've got a throbbing headache, a bunged up nose, runny nose, runny eyes. Got a bit of the lurgy. Uh, so what we're doing, it is Saturday the 29th of January, I think, and you'll find me down in Bommy Shed, and behind me, you'll see that I've got my new seed, uh, seed, soil rotating tumbler, sieve, stroke, trommel, right? So I'm going to turn this camera around now, and I'm going to just give you a little rundown on the bits and bobs that I've done before I put the camera on the tripod, and we'll... Uh, have a little shufty at it. Happy days. Right then, we're back. So here is, it's more or less completed now. Uh, without giving it a good test, uh, I'm sure it's gonna need a bit of fine tuning, but notwithstanding, here we are. So let's start from the other videos. You know all about the, the drums and the mesh that I've, uh, made the actual rotating soil sieve out of. Down there you can see I've got the, the wheels that I've reshaped to fit in that groove. Uh, this I've put on since the last little, because there is a little test video of this. Uh, so I'm going to look at that later and I'll put it online. So I've put this sloping this uh, piece of green metal on, yeah, and if you can tell, it slopes up, yeah, better angle there. So with a, with a sieve, with a sieve rotating this way, yeah, towards us, hopefully all the, the sieved material will land on there and then it can be shoveled out as you're going into uh, a wheelbarrow or a truck down here. 
I might put some kind of tow board there just to, so you can build the soil level up. But without really testing it, I don't know how it's going to work. So, this is just a piece of the off cutter metal there that I have bent with my own made bending machine just to give the motor some protection from the elements. Not that it's going to be left. Right, I don't know what happened there. I must have pressed the button and the, the, the camera went off. So where are we? This is a piece of metal I've bent. It's the off cut of this. This is a piece of metal I've bent and fitted just to give the motor a little bit of protection from the elements. Not that it's going to be left out in the rain, but, uh, you know, uh, just to stop any splashes of water or dirt getting on it. I have put up this here. I've put this little... Uh, what shall we call it? Let's call it a jockey wheel, yeah? Under normal circumstances, it doesn't touch, yeah? This this machine does wobble forward, backwards and forwards an eighth of an inch. So you might just get one little touch every now and again. This is just in case something goes pear-shaped and that this whole drum decides to come this way, this wheel will be uh, there to, to stop it and to protect it. And if it does come a bit more this wheels free to spin and it'll just keep it in line it's adjustable by these nuts and bolts there yeah you can slacken it or tighten it up adjust it yeah you know everything about how put the pulley on there pulley on there there's a rotation so before I get on to the electrics I just want to show you the wheels I've put wheelbarrow wheels on the back using 25 mil electrician's conduit, yeah. On the front, the same type of wheel, but smaller. Those are 13 or 14 inch, and I think those are 10 inch, yeah. Then that gives it uh, between two and three inches. If this machine was on the flat, it'd have a natural two to three inch slope from left to right as we're looking at it. But if you need to take the wheels off, yeah, just by pulling these pins out, yeah. I'm not going to put, oh, see how easy that came out, yeah? Put it back in. Yeah, watch your fingers because these hurt. Yeah, you can undo that clip on both sides and you can take that axle out really easy. Both axles, just in case you want to sit it on the ground or you want to block it up or you want to sit it on the back of your trailer. Yeah. These, by the way, are the only bolts I had that were suitable for the job to go through there, yeah? I, w I was going to cut them off, but I've decided to leave them on because what I might do is I might just uh, cut these ends off and put some nice big uh, wooden round handles on there to push it, to use as a push and pull, yeah? I've trimmed off these bolts that was holding on these pieces of wood. There's two on each one, so I've trimmed them off, yeah? So let's get on to the electrics. The electrics is, I tried to use a plastic box, but it wasn't suitable. So I threw it, smashed it, threw it away. And I went out and I bought, paid for this little storage box. Yeah. This little storage box got a clip on lid, costs 3 99 Perfect. So here we have the, let me, let me get you there. Here we have in, it's in the off position. It's a rocker switch. Let me just turn you around that way. Can you see? Hang on. It's hard to see that it's a rocker switch. That's better. Look, you can tell it's a rocker switch now. In the middle, it's off. Down, it'll go one way. And up, it'll go the other way. It'll reverse it. And then there, you've got a little knob, which is called a potentiometer, which will adjust the speed. Yeah. All the way around to the left, it'll be, it'll be off. And then all the way around to the right, you'll get high speed. So I'll just leave it somewhere in the middle for time being. So, this lid just unclips, yeah. Right. And in there, you've got a flying lead with a 13 amp fuse plug, yeah. Now I've just got to change that fuse. I've just got to change that fuse and make sure there's a 5 amp fuse in there. I, I could get away with a 3 amp because I don't even think it takes 3 amps. So, what have we got? It's a bit dark. 
There we go. Let me bend down. Let's see. So, oh, so this here is a 220, 220 volt to 12 volts DC uh, transformer, basically. Yeah. So you put your, you plug your lead into your socket and it brings a live, up there, a live, a neutral and an earth into them three connections there. And then it gives you the ability to have three 12 volt DC supplies out and three 12 volt DC neutrals there, yeah? So you can run, you could run three things off there if need be, right? So that's that. So that's basically just a transformer, yeah? Uh, if you're in the States, it'll also work with 110 volts, yeah? There's up on the top there, there's a slider switch. You just alter it before you turn it on. And then, here, your power comes out, 12 volt live and neutral, and it goes onto this little uh, speed, 12 volt speed controller. And that is wired up to this rocker switch, and it's all wired up to this potentiometer, yep. Yeah? And then the wires come out to the motor, and that there is just to protect those cables from touching that. Yeah, I wanted to be able to take this fan guard off without altering these cables. So that's what we've got, yeah? So I'm gonna stop this video, I'm gonna plug it in, and we're gonna turn it on. Right, we're back. So, we've got the extension lead up here. This switch is in the middle position, on the zero off position. So, I don't know if you can see in there, there's a little green light shown in there. I don't know if it shows up on this video. Can you see it? Oh yeah. That little green light will prove that you've got power on. And also, you can hardly hear it, but in there, there's a tiny little fan spinning round, cooling down that piece of electronic equipment. Uh, and that is why, I've mounted it quarter of an inch off the back of a uh, off the back of this box, so it's got plenty of room for airflow. Now, I was planning on having this lead coming through the bottom there with a waterproof gland, and just putting some drilling some uh, air holes in there, so you don't have to take that lid off. But that means you've always got this this lead hanging down, dragging around the wheels. So I decided. I'm just going to leave it so I can just coil this up, yeah, and then I can just put that in there like so, yeah. Clip that on there, and that will keep the lead in there nice and tidy, nice and safe, and out the way. The only thing I am thinking of doing is, because you take this off and then you've got to put this somewhere, you can't put it on there because that's going to get full of dirt, so you don't want to put it on the floor, because you're gonna be shoveling, shoveling soil here. And I'm making a purpose-built trolley to go in the end. So all I'm going to do, I think I'm just going to put that on some kind of drop-down, flap-down hinges somehow, so this can just stay there. So, let's get a plug back in. Green lights on, fans on, jobs are good. So, let me put that there. So here, I'll zoom, hopefully I'll try and zoom in a bit on the video. Here, it's in the off position. If I press it down, it'll rotate. Looking at the machine that way, it'll rotate clockwise. <coughs> Excuse me, which is what I'm after. So let's turn her on. Yeah? If I was to turn this potentiometer down, this speed controller down completely, it'll come to a complete standstill. You turn it around gently, and it'll go faster and faster, and now I'll turn it up to its full speed, which in itself isn't fast, but it's still faster than what I need. So that is full speed, yeah? When I finish this video, I'll work out how many revs per minute that is going around. 
I'm looking for about 25 to 30, but I don't know what that is at the moment. I haven't measured what that is, but I'll check that later. But I know that is, for me, that is too fast. So I think, I think something like that, yeah, that'll give you enough speed for the material to go down the chute and come out the holes, but it'll also give you enough time for it to be tumbled and and broken broken down, yeah. So we can turn that off to the mid position on that switch. And if for some reason you had a bit of a blockage or there's something that wasn't working properly, you can reverse it. That's the beauty of these 12 volt uh, DC motors. So if you press it up, it'll go the other way. So if you do get a bit of a blockage or the stones or something that are just not gonna go through, you can, uh, you can reverse it. And then uh, also, if there's something stuck, instead of putting your arm, you can just speed it up and that'll, that'll uh, bring it out. So, just, just in case anybody's interested, bear with me, you can still hear me, uh, where am I? So, I'm always interested on how much power uh, these these kind of gadgets take, yeah? So, I know we're converting, uh, we're converting 240 volts down to, down to 12 volts. Oh, look at that, drop me. Right, so, what I do is, let me unplug this again. This won't interest all of you, but if you're interested in the power, yeah? If I'm testing anything, or uh, I wanna know how many amps something he's drawing, yeah? Uh, I've, I've created this little rig, bit of cable, three pin plug, uh, Double socket, doesn't need to be a double socket, it's just what I'd spare. I normally use an RCD in the plug socket with this. And basically, these wires are bare, so you can get your, when it's running, you can put your, your meter, um, this is a fluke, they don't really come much better than fluke, uh, over there, and it'll tell you how many amps the machine's taking. So, let's get it all plugged back in, and we'll see how many amps it takes. Yeah, because you know, with the electrical equipment, whether it's your kettle, your tumble dryer, anything like that, you've just got to make sure you've got the right size fuse in there, because everybody will just put a 13 amp fuse in there thinking they're doing it, you know, doing themselves a favour. Uh, well, in the long run, you're not. So, in an ideal world, you want to be blowing your fuse sooner rather than later. So if you do have a problem, it gives you a benefit of being able to repair something without causing too much damage to the machine. So, I don't know what size fuse is in there at the moment, yeah? So, we're on, yeah? I'll set my meter to amps. So let's turn her on, yeah? Let's put her on full power. Yeah. And let's see if we can see how many amps we're taking. Can you see that? Less than half, half an amp. Yeah. Obviously, when you start putting, uh, when you start putting your material in the in the sieve, you generate uh, more of a load because there'll be weight in there and the extra weight in there will make the machine work harder to rotate it. So I'm expecting to draw some amps. So I'm fine. I'm just going to put a three amp fuse in there. Jobs are good. Un. Yeah, perfect. So that's how I test. That's how I test what size fuse I need in my piece of equipment. So, leaving that there. So, what else do we know? 
I'm gonna take you around this other side and I'll show you what I've got planned for there. Right, so here is the discharge area of where all the, the tilings and all the stones and the unwanted bits will be coming out the bottom of the, the rotating drum, yeah? So basically what I've done is I've made a little chute area, yeah? So they come down this way and then this back piece is pointing forward just to encourage anything to, to, to come this way. And today I've had four more of these little wheels delivered that, the, the, uh, that are on this end. And I'm gonna make a bespoke trolley out of an old metal wheelbarrow. Uh, uh, so it's bespoke, so it, it'll slide under there perfectly, yeah? Uh, and as I say, it'll be designed to slide right underneath there over this, this uh, little axle. Not too big, because obviously this is going to be full of the stones and everything else. So when you fill your wheelbarrow up, it's going to be quite heavy. So I think the wheelbarrow is going to be put on four wheels, I think. So uh, I'm going to look at that a bit later today, tomorrow. So yeah, that's what's going to work. Uh, that's the method I've got for sending out the, the, the spoils or the tailings. Yeah. Take no notice of this. That's a, a mark indicating the centre line of where that shaft is. That was for something else. But there's just that arrow there because that's the direction you want to be going in. Yeah, that's for demonstration purposes only. So, yeah, really pleased.